Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. Hello there, welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. And I am excited to be scrutinizing another video today. Today it's going to be KLHC 2019 Jack and Jill Advanced Division, which means a lot of different things for a lot of different people and all the different swing dancing communities. But this is Korea, so I mean, advance is probably gonna be really, really high. So let's get into it! And here we go. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna be looking at one couple. Korea is on a whole nother level, so that's all I'm gonna be going for is to look for the number one couple. Let's see. <laughs> this logo is epic. Yes. So folks, one of the qualities I'm going to be looking for is uniqueness. I want to see some weird, I want to see some, some style that is risk taking and a little bit different. So let's see what happens with this. Two. Hey!
So let's jump right into my analysis of this video. Um, I will tell you right now, this is a really difficult competition to judge because the level of the dancers is really high. I mean, technically speaking, all of the dancers know how to do what I would say is basic swing. Everything that has come from the first generation of swing dancing for me is basic swing. We should be able to do a tuck turn, a Texas Tommy. Um, tandem Charleston, swing outs. Those are fundamental things that we have to be able to do. And I did not actually see any problems with the dancers' capabilities and nailing all the fundamental stuff. So whenever I'm judging a competition in Korea, I first have to acknowledge that the part that is very objective, many of the dancers already understand. And that's the control and technical part of swing dancing. And in this particular competition at the advanced level, I wasn't actually going to even look at that. I wasn't looking at how perfect they can do the moves. I wasn't looking at any of those typical things that a lot of times we as judges elevate um, higher than it should be. I don't know why people do that, but I will say it's, it's really just some of the more objective, important, intrinsic things that you have to be able to do particularly if you're even doing a competition because most people would not just throw themselves out there to do a competition and not have some type of level of success that most people would recognize as being uh, good, right? So uh, for me, I decided to refrain from even scrutinizing this Jack and Jill from that perspective. So the thing that I looked at in this one, which, which is a little different, it's one of the three things that I normally look at that determine who's typically first place when I'm looking at a regular Jack and Jill when it's not uh, as uh, competitive. And in, even in extreme cases when it's really competitive, I pick or choose one of the other two that I'm looking for the most. And so in this particular one, I was looking strictly for the creative element. I wanted to see someone do something I haven't seen before or show me a personality that is different and new and fresh. And you guys know me. I am one that will go against the grain for the sake of what I find to be true. I will tell you my beliefs are one thing, but then I will tell you the truth has nothing to do with my beliefs. My beliefs dictate how I make choices, but the truth is exclusive. It is what it is. And I'm on the side of truth. And for me, when I looked at this, this was there was no problems. There were no problems technically. 
and the dancing. So now I just got to go to my beliefs. I literally just have to tell you my bias on what I liked and what I didn't like. What I didn't like is that everybody almost looked the same. They're dancing, the tone of the dancing, and that's understandable in some cases, but I think this is not just in this particular competition. This is a, an issue, I think, that has permeated most of uh, the community, and I speak the community as those who actually do swing dancing and, and like it. Um, it, it really gets around the community a lot to play it safe and do what we're told to do in a sense of artistic expression. Everyone was kind of doing the same stuff. I didn't see anything that was really new. So I'm a little disappointed in that. I really am. And so what I have to do is be fair and say all of the dancing was good, but I didn't like it. Isn't that interesting? It's really hard to be able to make that assessment. And it's not for everybody, you know? Dancing is a very subjective thing. Now, I will tell you, there were two couples that stood out to me that I would continue to watch in the future to see if they decide to go down the route of uh, taking more risk. Just a little bit more risk with their personality. Um, I didn't catch their names, but the, the follower who had a red shirt and yellow... Um, and the gentleman that had like a green sweater and it had like a checker type pattern on it, some stripes. For me, they were the most memorable. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and I, will, I will say that a lot of that had to do with the leader's uh, way of setting things up. He would set something up, the follower would receive it and move. But he wouldn't just go into this default movement. Like, hey, I'm supposed to do this every time I do a swing out or every time I do a tuck turn, my face is supposed to make this expression or my hands are supposed to do the exact same thing when really we only have two moves in swing dancing. We have left and we have right. We got, that's it. And it's all based on where you're standing. You can go forward and back, but if you're standing this way, that's left and right, <laughs> right? So the reality is there's a lot of embellishment that needs to take place in order to make something that is so common and uh, systematic look unique. And for me, their movements looked a little different. And I think most of it had to do with the tone of how they were moving. They weren't just kind of floating through the movements together the same way as everybody else was. And I think... When the leader would set something up like a tuck turn, sometimes he would just throw his body and stand there. Sometimes his hands would come up in a different way to make me go, ooh, that's different. I like it. Ooh, that's interesting. I didn't see someone do that before. And that's really what I, I was hoping to look for in this particular competition. I look for that ingredient all the time in a competition, but generally it is in context to timing and control to help me differentiate between who's second, third, and first. And typically, if you have all three of those things, that person tends to be first place, right? But in this case, I wasn't looking for a first place because it's easy to get first place, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're growing. It doesn't mean that you're stretching yourself, nor does it mean that you're unique. And in this case, where everyone can pretty much nail the competition on a technical standpoint, I was specifically looking for who was going to do something different to get me outside of the perspective of just looking at monotonous things, right? And they did that just a little bit. So whoever that couple is, um, thank you for doing that. Thank you for just being different and trying different moves and weird, weird positions with your body. That makes Lindy Hop interesting to me when we can just be ourselves a little bit. I know it's scary to just get out there and just embrace who you are and expect people to like you. But that's the reality is not everybody's going to like you. And I think it's easier to recognize that it's OK if not everybody likes your dancing. But what's really important is if you let them get a glimpse of who you really are, because you might find out there's a lot of people who do. And in many cases, there's more people who will appreciate your uniqueness and being who you are as opposed to just 
doing what you're told and imitating other people. Anyways, that's my perspective on it. What did you guys think? Who did you think was the most creative dancer? Who was the most different? Um, the other couple I really liked was the gentleman. He had uh, pink, uh, yellow hair and the partner had pink dress on. They were different. They aesthetically went for something. He went for something different. And when they were doing their moves, they kind of played around. It almost looked like it was like being silly. And, and that's different. So I'm a lot, some dancers like to use humor. And that's okay too. But it, it's something that just adds a freshness and a uniqueness to the overall template that we see that I think is appealing and we need to see more of. So if you are a dancer and you're you know, doing Strictly's and things like this and you're wanting to get inspiration, I would encourage you, you wanna start watching other dancers just to imitate them the best you can. And then once you've really learned how to do what they're doing, change something. Just keep growing from that process. Start off looking, Imitate until you master it and then change something. Eventually, you'll become so good at that process that you'll no longer crave just looking at other people to get inspiration, but you'll start having this natural reservoir of ingenuity start to bubble out of you because you've actually exercised your creative senses. So if you're needing some help with that, I encourage you to check out some of my free courses below. I've got over 25 different courses of my original uh, material. This is what I spend a lot of time doing in my home studio next door is just simply creating new ways to move and putting it out there for our online community to be inspired with. If you're a dancer who's really creative and you're coming into the scene and you're like me and you're like, how do I get good at this really fast? I don't want to take a long time at this. And from what I'm experiencing so far, it seems like it's really hard from all the different explanations and all the different approaches that just get in the way of what this thing really is. How do I actually see what's objective versus what is subjective? Well, I spent a lot of time being able to demystify all of that process for you. I spent over 10,000 hours social dancing and traveling and teaching to figure out a simple way to approach this dance so that if you don't speak English, it doesn't matter. You'll be able to simply take basic ideas and apply them for yourself so that you no longer will have to always have a teacher to check in with to determine if it's right or wrong. You can actually fix yourself while you're social dancing. That's the beauty of all that hard work I put in <laughs> so you can get taste a little bit of that uh, freedom to get the control and technical parts of Lindy Hop uh, under your belt in the fastest way possible. So with that said, guys, who did you think was the most creative dancer to you? Let me know your opinion in the comment section. Um, if I don't see you in class online, hopefully I get a chance to see some of your comments in the next reaction video. Take care.